You thought tanks were annoying in PvP? Trust us, you haven't seen the worst of it. Next patch, we will be introduced to the brand new Augmentation Evoker, which will become the first true support spec in World of Warcraft. Today, we will break everything down, starting with a general overview of the spec, then going over its most notable spells and cooldowns. After this, we will theorycraft some possible comps it will work well in, including some predictions on their playstyle, and even some possible counters. So if you want to prepare yourself for what might be the most unique spec ever introduced in PvP, then be sure to stay tuned. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly climb rating in WoW Arena. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. We do this because our service is proven to work, and if it doesn't, you don't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or by clicking the links in the video description. Anyway, let's get started. As the name suggests, augmentation means the ability to change your teammates' spells, bringing out the good old bard vibes from Dungeons & Dragons. This specialization lingers between being a healer and a DPS, acting as a true support class by granting its team off-healing capabilities, protective barriers, and in terms of buffs, it can enhance the mobility, damage, and stats of its teammates. But before we move on to the real question that everyone must be asking themselves, which is whether it'd be good and have a place in PvP, let's first cover augmentation's most important spells. To kick things off, let's talk about their mastery, Time Walker, which boosts the versatility of their party members after casting an empowered spell. It starts at a flat 4% increase that lasts a little over 10 seconds, but this can stack up to over 20% if you opt to prioritize this stat. On the PTR, we've already seen screenshots of versatility being buffed to over 50% with Augmentation Mastery, so it's pretty safe to say that it will be a highly desirable stat. At the core of the spec is the Ebon Might ability. A casted spell that increases the main stats of party members for 10% of your own intellect for a brief time, which again will stack with mastery for huge AoE damage bonus. Ebon Might will also include synergies with other spells in the Augmentation Toolkit, including a powerful PvP talent called Born in Flame, which makes Living Flame instant while Ebon Might is active. And with Inferno's Blessing, the Evoker can cause their party members to deal additional damage. Lastly, it owes its effectiveness due to the interaction with Breath of Eons, a spell that replaces Deep Breath for the Augmentation spec. While it retains some similarities like CC immunity and a significant portion of front-loaded damage, there is a notable distinction. This time, it creates a debuff on the enemy's struck. These temporal wounds accumulate 15% of all damage inflicted by friendly players with the Ebon Might buff through its duration, ultimately culminating in a critical strike for the amount of stored damage, acting like a sort of touch of the Magi from Arcane Mages. And as a special note for us PvPers, both Ebon Might and Breath of Eons are 40% more effective when not in a raid group because of the passive close as clutch mates. Next, the final major DPS buffs we need to discuss includes the combination of the Prescience and Fate Mirror talents. When used together, these talents provide a flat 3% increase in critical chance for your chosen teammate. Additionally, there is a possibility for every damage or healing done to Echo with an additional 15% value, which, depending on its proc chance in action, could become one of the most potent assets of this specialization. It's also worth mentioning that the cooldown of this ability is shorter than its actual duration, enabling you to strategically time it and have this buff active on both your teammates for further enhancement or maintain a 100% uptime on your chosen partner, depending on your game plan. Moving on to some more notable defensive talents, this new specialization addresses a long-standing weakness of the Evoker class, its lack of survivability and passive mitigation. To start off, Augmentation has cheat death mechanic similar to Cauterize, simply called Defy Fate. This spell, which can only occur every 6 minutes, prevents fatal damage with a burst of AoE healing for the Evoker and their teammates. Next we have Aspect's Favor, a talent that amplifies the effectiveness of either Hover or Obsidian Scales, depending on the color that you opt to attune with. Most notably, the Black Dragonflight buff grants an additional 20% health during your main defensive uses to everyone on your team. Yes, you heard it right, it's essentially a two-charge rallying cry on steroids. Moving on to more shared defensive utility, Augmentation has access to two strong protective barriers. The first is Blistering Scales, a thorns-like ability that increases armor by 30% of your own and counters melee hits with magical damage. Additionally, it can function as a damage absorption shield if specced into Molten Blood. Second, we have a PvP talent called Lava Shield. This spell grants the affected target complete immunity to interrupts and silence effects throughout its duration on top of providing a shield. We could definitely see this be used on healers during intense moments or even on fellow casters to guarantee vital CC or damage. Now, in the mobility department, we have an interesting addition to the game called Bestow Wearnstone. It's an ability that connects you to a friendly player and once every minute, it can be used to teleport up to 100 yards towards them. The exciting part is that your chosen teammate can also do the same and teleport to you whenever they want. 
Furthermore, the talent spatial paradox might prove to be an incredibly broken spell in capable hands. It's a temporary buff that can only be used on healers and adds an additional 40 yard range to most spells and granting the ability to cast while moving for 10 seconds. Yes, that's right, an additional 40 yards on some spells, which will mean being able to cast on targets on the other side of most arena maps. And lastly, in the notable spells department, we have a familiar one, Dream Projection, which you should already know from Preservation. It's important to note that this spell does some serious healing, and it's an AoE magical dispel, offering a possibility for the Augmentation Evoker to dispel their own healer out of CC. Now let's finally address the burning question regarding its viability in PvP and theorycraft about the compositions augmentation evokers might excel in. Firstly, we must play the role of the unfun police and state the obvious. Every specialization in the game is heavily reliant on spell tuning, and its success ultimately depends on the developer's will. However, if the spec numbers aren't completely abysmal, we are confident in saying that it will be viable for a few different reasons. We don't have to look too far to find a similar specialization in terms of PvP. With significant utility, a strong support role, occasional damage burst windows, and a high level of durability and resilience, our initial instinct is to draw a comparison between Augmentation Evoker and the former State of Protection Paladins in recent PvP history. Double healer compositions were even popular in the early WoW expansions, like Wrath of the Lich King, and Augmentation could be the element that reintroduces this playstyle into the modern era of the game. If that's the case, then composition-wise, we're betting on two things for the new Evoker. First, following the same train of thought, we can definitely see high sustained damage specs being the best classes to pair with augmentation, especially something like a warrior or maybe even a demo warlock. Anything that brings lots of sustained pressure, including a strong healing reduction effect. Because the augmentation toolkit adds a bunch of bulk and can sporadically increase team-wide damage, this could lead to a dampening playstyle of outlasting the enemy team and slowly grinding their defensives until ultimately securing victory. We're also placing some bets that augmentation could slot in with any setup heavy specs. To name a few, this includes frost DKs and sub rogues, as further buffing and enhancing their big one-shot and bursty damage spikes can very well be a strong win condition on its own while having the ability to keep their team alive in between setups. While we're on the topic, let's make some predictions on how augmentation might actually play in Arena. Initially, what first comes to mind is the need to be highly efficient in the support role. This involves having a high maintenance of crucial buffs on your teammates, such as your Mastery, Prescience, Ebon Might, or even making strategic use of Hover or Obsidian Scales empowered by Aspect's favor. Also, do not forget about your defensive maintenance, with spells such as Blistering Scales and Lava Shield being a big factor, plus some off-healing to go hand-in-hand -hand with your ultimate goal of dampening the enemy team. Now, offensively speaking, we can see two distinct playstyles based on both comp archetypes. First, if you opt for a sustained pressure composition, which is what we're predicting to happen the most, you then have the option to play Born in Flame and apply Micro Bursts in conjunction with your DPS teammate. Alternatively, you could be selfless and fully focused on supporting your partner. By doing this, your aim is to maintain the buff of Ebon Might for as long as possible by making consistent use of Eruption, Upheaval, Fire Breath, and Breath of Eons as they contribute to extending the duration of the buff through the passive Sands of Time. Alternatively, if you choose a hit and run strategy, focusing on smaller burst windows, we can definitely see the PvP talent Born in Flame coming into play. The goal here is to unleash the highest amount of front loaded damage possible when you're pushing for a kill. This way, during the duration of your Evan Might buff, you'll want to activate all your aggressive cooldowns and spam Living Flame as much as possible. This approach aims to maximize your damage output while making it challenging for opponents to shut you down. This playstyle revolves more around assisting in kill opportunities with your own damage. It's hard to predict how efficient these playstyles will be in solo shuffle. While protection paladins have their own bracket without any healers in it, it's difficult to envision augmentation thriving in a free-for-all battle and achieving success when its toolkit is based on coordinating abilities with their team. It may seem like augmentation is broken, but we think there might be some clear ways to exploit its potential vulnerabilities. Firstly, it is important to mention that many of its spells and talents appear to be balanced around a 5-man group and a PvE environment. This might result in them being somewhat undertuned for rank 3v3 matches and solo shuffle, considering the smaller group size in those content types. Secondly, since this specialization heavily relies on hard casts, our primary countermeasure is to ensure interrupting the augmentation evoker often. It's unclear whether precognition will remain in the game next season, but but if it does, this will be another mechanic worth playing around. To delve further into the details, both of the specialization's main damaging abilities, Eruption and Upheaval, have long casting times and belong to the same spell school. This implies that interrupting one of them also prevents the casting of the other. The same applies to the Augmentation Evoker's core spell, Ebon Might, which we previously emphasized its importance. And as a bonus, all three of these spells are in the same spell school as Obsidian Scales, their primary and most powerful defensive cooldown. 
As far as surviving against augmentation evokers is concerned, it will likely be recommended to trade defensives as soon as possible in response to each burst from the enemy evoker's teammate. Since the evoker's primary objective is to support and enhance their party members, if you effectively trade cooldowns against their ally, their main win condition will be severely compromised. Finally, we must warn you to expect long games against augmentation evokers and play for maximizing AoE pressure if possible, since most of their defensive toolkit and off healing is single target, and by doing so you assure high pressure and damage damage output, which can allow you to win the mana wars. To summarize everything, we can definitely see the new Evoker specialization being competitive in PvP as the first true support role. With the potential to add multiple damage modifiers to their team and with lots of unique utility options, Augmentation will likely play well with high sustained damage classes, potentially pushing games into deep dampening and trying to squeeze out wins by overwhelming enemy healers with damage. But we want to know what you think. What are your predictions for the new Evoker spec? Do you think it will be viable in PvP? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're doing that, if you want to gain rating fast this season, we have some amazing new courses which can only be found at skillcap.com. This includes brand new master and minutes guides for every role, which condense years of game knowledge into bite-sized pieces. We even have a new buff knowledge course, which teaches you what to look out for and how to dispel against every class. We're also updating class courses every week, including a redesign to all of our damage and healing guides in 10.1 with a brand new learning experience, which includes new micro commentaries and master and minutes guides, where you can learn all the tricks on how to min-max. So if you want to stay ahead of the meta and get the rating you've always wanted, then take advantage of our rank up guarantee and learn more about skill cap by visiting the links below. Anyway, that wraps it up for this one. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.